Hello and welcome to online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, our staff, and all of the people who are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so excited that you have picked Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for your worship, and we're so glad that you're here. Today we're continuing in our Worship Commitment and Celebration series entitled 10, Sovereignty, Sabbath, and Service, where we're focusing in on the Ten Commandments as they call us to greater worship, greater simplicity, greater generosity, and greater joy. We're so glad that you're doing this with us then. And I want to encourage everyone to use the contact form. It's pinned right in the comments section, especially if this is your first time to worship with us. Make sure that you use that contact form. It's a way that we can get to know you a little bit better. We'll be able to connect with you, to uh, be able to connect you with not just online worship, but with opportunities for service and small groups throughout the week. There is a place there for you to put prayer concerns and requests that you have for the pastors and for the prayer team. So please, everyone, use that contact form today so that we can be in connection with you in an even deeper way. When we gather for worship online in this way, we covenant together to be a blessing and to participate. And what that means by our covenant to participation is that we're gonna participate and do what it is that we're doing in online worship. So if it's time to stand up and sing, you go ahead and stand up and sing. If it's time to pray, go ahead and pray. You may find it helpful to close down other devices and distractions, maybe light a candle to help you focus, but we covenant and promise to fully participate in what we're doing. And then we covenant to be a blessing to one another and to the community in the way that we respond to one another in the comment section, in the way we're interacting with the people around us in our household or wherever we are, in the way that we are in worship with the entire community. Everything, we want it to be a blessing. That's our covenant to participation and blessing. We also, when we gather together, share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. And we're gonna be led in that right now by some of the special folks of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Megan Murray, and I'm a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and I work for Wouldn't It Be Lovely. I've been here for almost five years, and I am the lead designer and staff coordinator. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Hal Wakefield. I'm a volunteer with Wibble. Um, I'm kind of the fix-it guy. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Larry Burton. And I'm Ann Burton. I'm chair of the SPRC committee at Douglas Avenue. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. I'm Sue Landreve. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And hi, I'm Patty Ingram, and I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please receive this call to worship. 
Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. I'm glad everyone is here for online worship. And I'm glad that everyone is here for online worship. I want to celebrate that God is with us. So do I. And I want to live God's word in all that I do. So do I. And I want to share it with others. So do I. And I want to follow Jesus. So do I. And I want to serve the true and living God. So do I. Sue, I'm so glad that we're here. Patty, me too. Let's worship God together. Let's worship God together. Good morning. Please join members of the praise band as we sing Holy is the Lord. is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we My goodness, it is time for small talk. This is one of our favorite parts of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want all of the kids who are participating online with us today, get in really close so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. It's led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. Let's get ready for small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and Cohen. Now, we've been talking about faith. And Laud is going to show us his faith today because he has a lot of faith. He has faith in God, but he has faith in me too. That I'm not going to get him wet today. We have a bag of water here. We have some pencils. Okay, so Laud, this is what you're going to do. You're just going to sit here. I'm going to hold this bag over your head and I'm gonna stick pencils through it, okay? Okay? All right, so here we go. Ready? We have a, a pencil, regular pencil, bag of water. See, Lud, it worked. Oh, yeah. He's not sure about this? Yeah, we're just sticking some pencils through bags of water. 
We're doing it in the house because I have that much faith that this is gonna work. Stop shaking, you're fine. Yeah, so we have some regular pencils here. It's working. Huh. Now I'm thinking, so do you have some faith that if I kind of do one of these like sideways that that'll work? Sideways? Like if I go like that, and that's a colored pencil, so that's different. That worked too. We're not leaking at all. Are you amazed? But see, you had that much faith. That's what faith is like. Having that much faith in God, he had faith that he wasn't going to get what? He didn't. So keep that in mind. Now, maybe as we start to lose our faith in God a little bit, I'm not going to do this part over your head. You take these pencils out. Yeah, we're going to spring a leak. And again, like last week when we talked, things might start to go a little wrong. So keep that in mind. We've, we've talked about faith last week and this week because it's what's going on in our Celebrate Wonder series that we're doing on Wednesday nights. So please join us. Now, I'm going to talk to Mr. Mark. I'm going to do a little video about how and why this works scientifically, and that will probably be on our church website. So see you later, guys. Don't get to not lose your faith. Don't drink the water, Lord. Good morning. I'm Ed Boer. I'm doing the reading today from the scripture. Today's reading from the Bible is from the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy, the Ten Commandments. Today I will read for you the first four commandments found in verses 6 through 15. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible readings. Moses called out to all Israel, saying to them, Israel, listen to the regulations and the case laws that I'm recounting in your hearing right now. Learn them and carefully do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Horeb. The Lord didn't make this covenant with our ancestors, but with us, all of us who are here and alive right now. The Lord said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You must have no other gods before me. Do not make an idol for yourself, no form whatsoever of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Do not bow down to them or worship them because I, the Lord your God, am a passionate God. Do not use the Lord your God's name as if it were of no significance. The Lord won't forgive anyone who uses his name that way. Keep the Sabbath day and treat it as holy, exactly as the Lord your God commanded. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Don't do any work on it, not you, your sons or your daughters, your male or female servants, your oxen or donkeys or any of your animals or the immigrant who is living among you so that your male and female servants can rest just like you. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt. The Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That's why the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath day. Good morning, I'm Liz Schwartzkopf. I came back to Douglas about five years ago with my childhood church. I am now a member of the Nurture Team and Deborah Anna Circle in UMW. Our second reading of the Bible is Mark chapter two, verses 23 through 28. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and as they made their way, the disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest, 
and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even on the Sabbath. May God bless the reading and understanding of the Bible readings we have heard today. Amen. Each week, we're inviting someone who's a part of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family to tell about why they love and support Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Today, we have a wonderful testimony with Diana Trost. Hello, my name is Diana Trost. I started attending DAUMC last summer and joined as soon as I could. I knew only one person before attending, but that quickly changed. Everyone was so friendly and welcoming. I loved helping out with the garage sale and I can't wait to do that again. I've attended three different Sunday school classes and I've enjoyed them all. I can't believe how much is going on at Douglas at any one time, even now with COVID. The people I've met are truly servant hearted. And I love all the women. I joined United Methodist Women and can't wait to get back in the kitchen. I helped UMW at the energy conference last December with Jill and others, and everyone really pitched in. Oh, and then there's the garden. My husband and I really found peace there this spring and summer tending to it, and we hope to make it better in the future. I love that Douglas cares so much about the environment. Last October's stewardship campaign about living more simply really made sense to me. I've been making small changes here and there that make it possible to be generous in giving back to God. I feel that that sermon series really prepared me for this COVID time to scale back and just focus on what's really necessary. My only problem with Douglas is that there's so much going on, I want to do it all, but I know that's not possible. I've learned to chill out a little and trust God on where to get involved. And last, but certainly not least, two words, women pastors. I'm so glad I found DAUMC. Hi, my name is Karen Brown. I am a member of the Praise Band, Lydia Circle, and the Trustees. And would you please join with me in singing, Thy Word is a Lamp. For the next several weeks, our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family is joining together in a season of online worship, learning, prayer, and reflection around our stewardship of money, time, service, and spirit. We're diving in with the Ten Commandments in this season, exploring those life-giving instructions designed to guide and nurture us in all aspects of our lives.
our relationship with God, with our family, our friends, with our community and the creation, and our relation to, relationship to and use of the abundant resources with which God has blessed us. I believe that God calls us through these Ten Commandments to greater worship, greater simplicity, greater generosity, and greater joy. Last week, we concentrated on the first three where God commands, do not worship any God except me, don't bow down and worship idols, do not misuse my name, God says. God puts right at the beginning of the commandments from which all these others flow, puts right there these first ones that powerfully show us that our only orientation for life in this world is God. Last week, we talked about how difficult this can be for us and our struggles with idolatry. But the Ten Commandments show us, in no uncertain terms, that God is sovereign. God is God of all that we are and all that we have and all that we do. All of our life, our work, our money, our vote, our school, our families, our play, all of it. I wanted to remind you of those first three commands where we're talking about sovereignty because we need them in our hearts for the commandment we're focusing on today. We're only focusing on one today. And to put it simply, it is this. Remember that the Sabbath day belongs to God. Sabbath. What does the word Sabbath bring to mind for you? I want you to think a minute about that, and if you want to share those initial thoughts in the chat section right now, go ahead if you want to. For a long time, the first image about Sabbath for me actually was formed by the Little House on the Prairie books not the TV series, but the nine books by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I know that this ages me a lot, but I loved those books as a kid, and I read them over and over and over again. In Little House in the Big Wood, Laura describes Sabbath Sundays in her childhood in the 1870s, uh, in her life there deep in the woods of Wisconsin. Everyone took a bath the night before Sabbath, and then they dressed in their best clothes the next day. The children were to not shout. They were not to run, not to be noisy in their play. They could quietly hold and look at their dolls, but no sewing or knitting. Ma would read Bible stories to them, and there was maybe some other reading that would happen. They stayed home as it was too far to travel into town to go to church and they would just minimally care for the animals. In the books, the child Laura found their Sabbath Sundays to be very, very, very trying. Now, we didn't have any reflection in their insight from the adult characters uh, about how they felt about that sitting and resting, but for the childhood Laura, it was really trying. I'm gonna read again for us, though, the commandment for Sabbath that Ed has already shared with us so beautifully from the Bible book of Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave, or your ox or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Sabbath is, at its deepest heart, a practice of restoration. Sabbath is spiritual practice that reconnects us with God and with one another, that restores relationship and health, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Sabbath practice makes room and space for creativity and laughter, full breathing and expressions of love and healing. 
And as we see in our reading of it from Deuteronomy, Sabbath is for everyone and everything. In the flow of the Ten Commandments, the command of Sabbath serves as a bridge. The command of Sabbath is that spiritual practice that helps focus our life on the sovereignty of God that's outlined in the first three commandments. And it's that spiritual practice that helps us live well with others, that promotes the health and well-being of everyone, and to live ethically with everyone as outlined in the final six commandments. Now, it didn't take long for the people of Israel to lay aside Sabbath practice, the good gifts for all the people in the creation, that rest and reconnecting and eating and walking and making love and playing and blessing for everyone, not just the elite or the boss, but for the worker and the day laborer, the household slave, the undocumented worker, and the very land itself. We hear in the prophet Amos, who was the earliest of the prophets, that trading had become common on the Sabbath, and the prophets that follow lift up true Sabbath practice as key to justice and righteousness. Even the rigors of Nehemiah's reforms in Israel couldn't bring about a willing practice of resting from economic trade on the Sabbath. And then there's Jesus' reclaiming the Sabbath again not just from secular work, but from religious practices that had become onerous work, that had ostensibly unsabbathed the Sabbath. In our reading from the Bible book of Mark that Liz shared with us, Jesus takes the religious authorities to school. Jesus says, people are hungry and they should eat, whatever day that is. And then Jesus goes on to remind everyone, particularly those who were seeking to retain their power and privilege. Jesus says the Sabbath was made for humankind, not the other way around. In sum, your religious laws to keep Sabbath are keeping people from keeping Sabbath. Your rules aren't the Lord of Sabbath. God is. And here we are today in our explorations with Sabbath, right in the middle of the Ten Commandments. Not given as a lifestyle suggestion, but a commandment. A commandment ahead in the list of the prohibitions against stealing and killing and lying. Why? How can forgetting Sabbath be as morally and socially dangerous as killing, lying, stealing, the commandments that follow it? How can forgetting to be restful, forgetting to sing songs, to worship, to take delight in creation and one another, how can forgetting to give everyone and everything a break, how could forgetting to do that be as awful as murder, robbery, and deceit? How can this be? In the now classic text, Sabbath, Finding Rest, Renewal, and Delight in Our Busy Lives by Wayne Muller, he makes the powerful connections that without Sabbath, we move toward a life that is violent. Without Sabbath, we move toward a life that is violent. Muller writes, a successful life has become a violent enterprise. We make war on our own bodies, pushing them beyond their limits. War on our children because we cannot find enough time to be with them when they are hurt and afraid and need our company. War on our spirit because we are too preoccupied to listen to the quiet voices that seek to nourish and refresh us. War on our communities because we are fearfully protecting what we have and do not feel safe enough to be kind and generous. War on the earth because we cannot take the time to place our feet on the ground and allow it to feed us, to taste its blessings and give thanks. Sabbath can be a far-reaching, revolutionary tool for cultivating those precious human qualities that grow only in time, Muller writes. Sabbath practice. It is a big old challenge 
to our idolatrous economic culture of instantaneousness, of overwork, mindless accumulation of stuff, and even experiences. All of that which is exploitive of other people and the environment. Muller goes on to say, Sabbath does not require us to leave home, change jobs, go on retreat, or leave the world of ordinary life. We do not have to change clothes or purchase any expensive spiritual equipment. We only need remember. By its very nature, then, this command to keep Sabbath is subversive, and transformative. Sabbath breaks the powerful hold of destructive powers and the impetus to keep everything going per usual. You know, don't make waves, just keep grinding along as you are and everything will be okay. In the big picture, just let the powerful be powerful at the expense of whomever and the creation and everybody will just be okay. The command of Sabbath says a big no to that. No to economic exploitation. No to frenetic work. No to doing it all. No to having it all. No to the idolatry of all of it. And a big yes to health. Yes to healing. Yes to rest and restoration for all people. For all people. For you, for whomever does the housework and is holding down the fort at home, to the grocery store workers, healthcare providers, teachers and students, bank president and non-documented immigrant, farmer and those without employment, health, healing, rest and restoration for all people and all of creation. So how's your Sabbath practice going? And to my working at home, schooling families and teachers out there, please don't just slam your device closed at this moment and, and stomp off, please. Go ahead and throw a shoe at the screen if that makes you feel better, but please stay with me, take a deep breath. And let's consider this for just a moment. Let's talk about how our Sabbath practice is going. I believe Sabbath practice for many of us was probably not great before the COVID-19 pandemic. And if anything, the COVID-19 pandemic has laid this bare for many of us. I know that I tend to not be so good at Sabbath practice. And I don't say that lightly either. I'm pretty good about regular worship and not just because I'm a pastor. I actually worship with you, even while leading worship, online or in person. But regular rest and allowing others to rest, I'm not so good at that. And this is no small thing. Lack of rest takes a huge toll on physical health, mental health, spiritual health, on the health of our relationships, our most intimate relationships to our working relationships, to the way we are in relationship with people we pass in the grocery store or are driving down the street beside. And that was before the constant crisis management living of the last seven months, which is taking its toll. I want you to take another deep breath. I believe our challenge of 10 can be very helpful for us this week in setting us down a path of transformation and, dare I say, resistance. In our challenge of 10 for last week, we prayed about the tithe or increasing our giving by 10% as a way to work toward a tithe as we reflect on God's sovereignty. This week, we're taking up the challenge of 10 for Sabbath to use 10% less. Maybe for you that could be spending 10% less money or using less electricity or eating 10% less meat. Maybe your challenge of 10 Sabbath is to participate in online worship each week, honoring that Sabbath practice of worship. Maybe your challenge of 10 for Sabbath could be spending 10% less time working 
or 10% less time with your screen or online devices, or 10% less time being out and about, staying home instead, and cutting your COVID exposure and the COVID uh, exposure of others in the process. I encourage you to pick something simple that will help calm your heart and lower the temperature of your frenetic fire, that helps you focus more on God this week and the blessings that God gives us. Please put your ideas for this Challenge of 10 Sabbath practice right in the comments if you want to. You may inspire someone else, or you may pick up some inspiration from someone. We're not going to be able to fix it all right now. I wish we could. But that is not how real life works most of the time. But this is also why spiritual practice is so important. We get started. We take the steps, sometimes the teeniest of steps, and we practice, and it builds, and it builds. Your challenge of 10 Sabbath practice works that same way. You get going. Maybe it's the teeniest of steps, but try and practice, and it builds. I want to remind you that our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family is surrounding this whole season in prayer, and that is such an important part of this process. We need God's help and direction and grace and mercy, and prayer is key to that. Please remember in all of this that first and foremost, God loves us, that God loves you, that you are a precious, beloved child of God, and God wants us to be in relationship in this healthy, life-giving ways that reflect that beloved image. As you consider your challenge of 10, Sabbath of 10% less, I encourage you to use the prayer cards that you received in the mail this week or use the online prayer card. That link will be right in the comment section. The prayer card is a way to commit to this season along with your church family and solidarity with all of us in this time. If you have not received a hard copy of these, along with the prayer tokens that we sent out, they look like this. Let us know uh, contact the church office. We'll get them out to you. Let us know in the online contact form or in the comment section. I want you to take another deep breath, a deep Sabbath breath. And join me in praying our Challenge of Ten prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for your faithfulness, your love, and the life-giving direction you give us through the Ten Commandments. Help us to live fully in your sovereignty, Sabbath, and service. Help us to take the next steps to tithe our money, use 10% less resources, and give 10% more time to your service. Amen. Hi, I'm Curtis. Hi, I'm Karis. Hi, I'm Meredith. Please join us in singing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Good morning, my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the Associate Pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is now the time in our worship service 
where we all take a deep breath and kind of clear our mind of all of the, the clutter that might be in our, in our mind and in our thoughts. And we just join our hearts with the heart of God and we go to God in prayer. I am praying today in the sanctuary in front of the prayer tree that Pastor Meredith um, created for us, um, a space where we can come into the church and we can pray about our commitment to the church, um, how we can give our time and our talents um, to the Lord in service and with our um, resources. So I hope that you have spent time with God in prayer um, with our commitment of 10 this season. I do ask you now to take a deep breath and go to God in prayer. Loving God, we come to you on this Sabbath the time that we have set aside to be with you, to worship you, to give you thanks, to praise you, the time that we set aside for only you. We come to you today in celebration of many things. We come with you in celebration of all of the ministries of our church, for all the ways that our church continues to use those resources for your kingdom. We also come to you, O oh God, on this Sabbath, asking you to help us all to draw us nearer to you so we will spend time with you in prayer, that we will all make that little time available for you or that big time that we create our own Sabbath throughout the week, that set aside time for only you, O oh God. We also come today with a heavy heart in a lot of ways as the coronavirus cases continue to increase rapidly in our area. We pray, O oh God, that you will draw near to those that are struggling with the illness, for all of those that have loved ones that are. We pray, O oh God, that you will be with those. We especially pray again today, O oh God, for the healthcare workers, those that are in the hospitals, those that are caring for people that are so sick, that you give them strength, that you give them the, the courage, the wherewithal, and all that is needed to care for this population at this very difficult time. Please draw near to the hospitals and to the nursing homes and to all the places that we need your presence in a really big way, oh God. We continue to pray for the teachers and the students and the parents at this difficult time as well, knowing that you are with us always, that you will be with all of us, whatever our difficulties are. Be with, oh God, those that are struggling with grief. May it be someone that they lost or lost possibilities, lost plans. Draw near to each of us as we all have our own individual small losses through this time. We pray, O oh God, for those that are sick with anything. We pray that you will heal each and every person that comes to you in only the way that you can heal them. O oh God, we pray for our denomination and the leaders that are making decisions on how, how best we are to do worship to keep everybody as safe as possible. Please be with our bishop, our district superintendent, and for Pastor Meredith. Oh God, this is also a very difficult time in our country. So much political division and unrest as we draw near to this election. God, we ask for peace in our country. We ask that each person will vote with their conscience, that they will look to you before casting their, their ballot. We pray for whatever the results are, that each and every person will feel um, the necessity to be kind and gentle, that we will just pray for the leader that is elected, that we will stand behind and there will not be further unrest. We continue, oh God, to ask you to be with the racial problems in our country, that all people that are discriminated against for all of the bias that goes on in our country, that each and every person will get a fair share of your glorious kingdom. Draw us all near to you. Help us all know what our part is, to how you call us to go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this world. Oh God, we now come to you in a time of silence and we bring to you all of those things that are deep within our hearts. Be with us now as we pray in silence. And now with the prayer that brings us all so much comfort, no matter if it's the coronavirus or political unrest or whatever, when we go to God saying the Lord's Prayer, we feel your presence and the community of faith around us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is always my honor and privilege to invite you into a life of generosity, to be generous in your financial giving and the giving of your time and your service. And I thank you for all the ways that you have been doing that already in support of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Your financial gifts make a world of difference in this time particularly, as we are involved in so many ministries in our community, supporting so many people in their lives of faith and in growing in their lives of faith. Thank you for that generosity. You can give your financial gifts, of course, online using our online giving portal, and the link to that is in the comment section. You can give through your financial institutions, online bill pay, that's a simple way to do it. You can call into our church office and we'll set up an online automatic withdrawal with our financial institution for you. You can also, of course, always send your checks into Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church as well. Thank you for that continued financial giving. I want to remind you, of course, to use your contact form, that there's a place there for your prayer concerns, that you'd like to uh, go to our pastors and to our prayer team, and that link is also in the comments. And then I invite you to receive this mission moment that is about our micro pantry that we host here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I work here at Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and every day before I leave around 1 o'clock, I come down between 12 and 12.30, and I go down to Shepherd Hall, and I get a big box of food, a few of everything, and I come down here to this micro pantry, and I completely stock it. Our congregation needs to support the food bank because there are people in our neighborhood who are hungry. They get their food stamps, they get everything else they need, but by the end of the month, which we're getting toward, food runs out. And this is a chance for people to just have a stock up a little bit extra. The more and more it gets colder, I see more and more people come and come, and it, gets, it dwindles down more and more, and I see that I have to go back there more and bring more and more stuff back. I do. And when I was living on the streets, thank God I don't anymore. But when I was living on the streets, I had to rely on micro pantries and churches to help me feed me the bread line to feed me, you know, when I was living on the streets. And without them, I don't know how I would have, you know, really survived. When you go to the store, just throw an extra box of cereal or a box of macaroni and cheese or anything that you think people would enjoy in your basket and then just drop it off here at the church. Mm -hmm. Because I know that the people that are gonna come here throughout the day are gonna be hungry. And if they don't get that food, they're gonna go hungry tonight. Please stand and join me in singing, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
thank you so much for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for this online worship. I hope that this experience has been powerful, has been meaningful for you, that it has been a moment of Sabbath for you this day. I encourage you again to use your contact form uh, so that we can connect with you. Use the prayer concern space that's there so that we can receive your requests for prayer for the pastors and the prayer team. Know that we love you. We miss getting to see you in person. That we are praying for you. That we are praying for the health and safety and well-being of our community and our world. And we long to connect with you. So please let us do that as you go into the rest of your day. Go knowing that the God of Sabbath loves you completely, that Jesus Christ calls you forward into a life of health and well-being and powerful service, and that the Holy Spirit guides and protects you on the way. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Amen.